When we think of vampires, some of us may think of the impossibly fast, strong, sparkly kind. Or some others may think of the garlic kryptonite, stake through the heart kind. But this is all the stuff of legends and folklore. Or is it? In our history there have been some very real vampires, although they aren't exactly the same as those in the movies. What is up Top 10 fam, welcome back. I am your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and today we are diving into all things spooky as we cover the top 10 real life vampires in history. Starting off in our number 10 spot we have Elizabeth Bathory. Elizabeth was a Hungarian noblewoman and a serial killer who lived from August of 1560 to August of 1614. She was born into one of the oldest and most powerful families in Transylvania, and she was well educated and ran various estates and bore many children. Oh, and this is all happening while she was also killing young women and bathing in their blood. Yeah, weird and gross and terrible. I know bathing in and drinking blood are not the same thing, but I think it's fair to admit that neither is necessarily normal behavior. Elizabeth is known for killing her servants and bathing in their blood as she believed it would keep her young. I guess no one told her about moisturizing and minding your own business. All accounts of Elizabeth remember her as a terrible, evil person. It is said that her number of victims most likely ranges somewhere from 175 to 200 but some people claim it might be as many as 600. It is no wonder she is referred to as Countess Dracula. In our number 9 spot today we have the Vampire of Dusseldorf. Peter Curtin, who is also known as the Vampire of Dusseldorf, was actually a German serial killer from the 1930s. This man committed some incredibly atrocious acts for which he was tried and convicted. He ended up being found guilty for the killing of 9 people, as well as attempting to take the lives of 7 more. This guilty verdict led to him being sent sentenced to beheading, which took place in 1931 when Peter was 48 years old. How he got nicknamed as the Vampire of Dusseldorf was because he admitted to having drunk the blood of at least one of his victims, if not more. How terrible, disgusting, and absolutely terrifying, like everything on this list today. In our number 8 spot today we have Vlad the Impaler. I've talked about Vlad before, in fact I did a whole video on him, so if you haven't seen that one, make sure you check it out. But if you don't know who he was, he was the ruler of Wallachia three times between 1448 until his death in 1476. He is often regarded as one of the most important rulers in Wallachian history, and to many he is a hero. And this is not to disregard that, but you don't get a nickname like the Impaler by being a passive, peaceful guy. Vlad was known for his brutality and his love of impaling people, but it is also said that Dracula was modeled after him. This is because it is rumored that Vlad liked to dip his bread in the blood of of his enemies before eating it. I prefer a little olive oil and balsamic vinegar with mine, but hey, to each his own I guess. So although it isn't said that he was running around biting people's necks, I think the whole consumption of blood thing is enough to classify someone as having some vampiric tendencies. In our number 7 spot today we have Mercy Brown. This one is a little different than some of the others on this list today, and it's a bit dark, but it's an important part of our history so I feel I need to include it. Mercy Brown is said to be one of the most famous vampires in history. She lived in Exeter, Rhode Island in the late 1800s, and during this time, similar to the idea of the Salem Witch Trials, there were worries throughout the New England region about vampirism and the evil disease. It was happening often that bodies of those who had passed would be searched for what the townspeople considered signs or symptoms of the disease. Mercy and many members of her immediate family all passed around the same time, which sounds absolutely horrible for the family. To make matters worse, especially for the members of the family who were still living, other people in the town began to spread rumors about how all of these deaths were due to a vampire living amongst them. Mercy passed during the winter time and she was buried in an above ground vault which helped to preserve her body for a lot longer than a normal burial would. Do you see where I'm going? When her body was later exhumed to investigate these rumblings of vampirism, it was determined that this miraculous preservation of her body was because she of course was a vampire and it obviously had nothing to do with, I don't know, science? So of course, without being able to defend herself, she was accused and then the townspeople cut out her heart and burned it. 
Yeah, it was pretty brutal. So no, Mercy Brown was not a vampire. She was merely a victim of mass psychosis. In our number 6 spot today we have the Alnwick Castle Vampire. The story of this vampire is so old that it actually comes from a time before the word vampire even existed. This story was chronicled by a man called William of Newburgh and he reported that a man came back from the dead after he had passed while spying on his wife who was being unfaithful to him. When the man was spying he was on the roof which he ended up falling off of. He then returned to life as a walking, rotting corpse and began spreading plague to all of those still living. Apparently from here a priest gathered a group of parishioners and together they all went and found the grave of the man. From there they stabbed the corpse and it is said that warm blood ran from his body which is how they confirmed their suspicions of him being a vampire or whatever the word for vampire was back then. They then burned the body and it is said that the attacks stopped. I wasn't there for this event, obviously. So I'm not exactly sure what really happened or how these stories came to be, but I think the people of the time may have exaggerated just a touch. Or a lot. In our number 5 spot today we have the Vampire of Croglin Grange. This event took place in the 1800s when the Cranwell family moved to Croglin Range in Cumbria. One evening Lady Cranwell noticed some strange lights in the garden below her bedroom but didn't think much of it. Later she saw those same lights but only this time they were closer to her window. When she went to investigate she realized that they were not lights but instead were eyes. She was absolutely terrified as anyone would be and to make matters worse whatever this creature was began removing removing her window panes before reaching in a rotten hand and opening the latch. Luckily her brothers heard her screams and came to help, but just as they entered the room they saw a cat-like figure escaping out into the darkness and Lady Cranwell was left with a wound to her neck. After this the brothers decided to slay the creature and set up a trap. They had their sister pretend to sleep in the same room and when the vampire tried to come in through the window again, the brothers jumped out armed with pistols and they shot at it. The vampire screamed and ran off into the night. The next day the brothers and a group of angry townspeople that they had assembled went out hunting for the vampire and they began searching the graveyard which is where they found an open crypt. Inside of it they found gnawed bones and a coffin that contained a corpse with what appeared to be a recent bullet wound. This was enough to convince the group that they had found the creature they were looking for and they went on to burn the body. In our number 4 spot today we have Vincenzo Verzeni. Vincenzo lived from 1849 to 1918 and he was a serial killer who had the nickname the Vampire of Bergamo. The first of his victims was found in 1870 and when authorities examined the body they found bite marks on the neck as well as certain parts of the body missing. The next of his victims he didn't end up taking the life of but he did try to bite their necks. In 1872 there was the next body of one of his victims that was found and it had all of the strange and disturbing signs that the previous one had. After Vincenzo was arrested he can confessed to his crimes with the added details that he also chose to drink the blood of his victims before leaving their bodies. Somehow Vincenzo managed to escape the death penalty after a vote of sympathy from only one juror and he instead was sentenced to life in an asylum. In our number 3 spot today we have Neville Heath. Neville was a man who lived in the mid 1900s and he had a criminal history of committing fraud but no one really knew what dark sinister crimes he was really hiding. In 1946 in London he began committing identity fraud when he started posing as a lieutenant colonel. Under this guise, but using his real name at the hotel he checked into, he ended up taking the lives of two women and with all of the other horrible things he did, he also drank their blood. It doesn't appear as if this was the motive for the killings, but rather just a terrible, horrible addition to it. Thankfully Neville was caught by the authorities and ended up receiving capital punishment for his horrific doings. In our number 2 spot today we have Arnold Pale. Arnold was a man who passed away in 1726, but before he passed he began claiming that he had been bit by a vampire. He said that this bite had left him feeling cursed, and after his passing, people in the village he lived in also started passing away. Instead of thinking maybe some sort of disease was spreading, they remembered that Peter had said that he had been attacked by a vampire, so they immediately believed that this must be the source of all of these strange deaths. When they dug up the body of Arnold, they had all the proof they needed to believe that he was really a vampire. 
hair. It is said that his hair and nails were longer than when he had been buried and that he had blood in his mouth so naturally he needed to be burned. Four years after they exhumed his body and burned it, 17 more deaths in the village occurred and it began to be blamed on the victims of Arnold. This guy just ended up taking the fall for a lot of stuff that happened in this village. In our number one spot today we have Peter Pelagajewicz. When someone looks up real vampires in history, Peter's name is one of the first to pop up. Who is Peter? Well, he was a Serbian man who died in 1725, but he was thought by those who lived in his village to be a vampire. Shortly after his death, people in the town began to claim that they were being visited by Peter at night, which, like, of course, can't happen because he died, right? To make these reported sightings stranger, many of those who claimed to see Peter also ended up being found dead shortly after these sightings. Even Peter's own son apparently died from massive blood loss just days after he said he had seen his dad. This led to a case of mass vampire hysteria in the town where all the residents began to demand that Peter is a vampire who needed to have his body exhumed and burned. They did this and it is said that his body had all the markings of a real vampire but who knows what that even means. They ended up burning his body and it is said that after this was done, all of the sightings of Peter stopped. All right guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it today and don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more and don't forget to not accuse people of being vampires. Don't do that, it's weird, all right? <laughs> I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski and I'll see you next time, bye.